you know, with, with the visualization, you know, I've heard different people say that, you know, the mind doesn't differentiate the, you know, physical experience from an imagined one, and, and I'm trying to connect that to the visualization. And, you know, obviously, when you, when you have a great day, You've physically gone through that, all those shots, and when, when you just imagine it, obviously you haven't physically gone through that. Is, um, what's your take on that, and is it about rehearsing the outcome that you want, and does that you know, improve your, your likelihood of, of, of hitting those shots? I don't know if I could quantify that for sure, if that actually happened, but for me it was, you know, you can only hold one thought in your mind at one at one time. So if you see that shot going the way you want it, then um, you know your body may react a little bit a little bit better to where you want it to go if you visualize it properly. Yeah. I mean, meaning, uh, you know, if you're visualizing it turning right to left towards the hole, if that's all you're thinking of, then you can't possibly. Um, think of it going in the water to the right because your mind is not capable of processing that. If you're if you're seeing and visualizing and thinking right to left towards the hole, right to left towards the hole, right to left towards the hole, then there isn't that nanosecond of doubt that oftentimes takes your ball to the right in the water. Yeah. So that's what that's what the visualization helped me to. It was it was paint the picture of of how you wanted it to go and try to keep that in your mind as as much as you can. It's you know, it comes back to good caddies never saying don't hit it right. They'll say yeah. hit it left. Because if you say don't hit it right, your mind goes to the right. Yeah. That's not right. and, and people who may not believe in it or, or or practice it or experience it will, you know, they may not, they may not believe it, but, um, it's, uh, I, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's true. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree, I agree as well. Um, yeah, the mind, the mind really doesn't identify the, the don't or the, or the negative side of, of a process that just focuses on, on the piece, um, on what you focus on, really, and, and it doesn't interpret the negative. So, um, how, uh, how important is pre-shot routine to the, you know, the psychology side of, of your success? Um, you know, for me, I think it was a big part of my pre-shot routine was, um, you know, just practicing it. You know, when you're when you're practicing, um, you know, to make sure you ingrain that routine mentally and physically of you know the visualization, the the preparation before before each shot. You know, getting wind, getting distance, uh, recognizing where the trouble is, that sort of stuff. And then for me, um, it was it was just just do it. Once you're on the golf course, just, uh, you know, go through your pre-show routine. And hopefully, um, you know, I had a couple of experiences where I had a putt to win. Um, and it was, for me, it was, okay, go through, you know, just go through your pre-show routine. And I would, I would be there physically trying to Make sure I would go through my pre-shot routine, and and then once it came time to hit the hit the putt, it was sort of just a physical thing. And I learned from that when I when I went in Vancouver to when I had the putt to win in Vancouver, I recognized and told myself, okay, go through your routine. But that was my trigger. I didn't have to I didn't have to physically think about going through it. So I recognized that. Okay, you're gonna stick to your routine, but after I, I mentioned it to myself, it was forgotten almost. You know, it was just a quick reminder, and then you went through it as if it was just another putt, which I think is is what a pre-shot routine is intended to do. It's, it's to sort of detach any results from from what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And uh, and that's 
certainly helped me, you know, and, and that, that'll go back to your experience question where, you know, I, I had to, I had to mess up once before I, uh, well, more than once, uh, but, but specifically I had to, I had to mess up with my pre-shot routine over a putt to win before I could, uh, go back to that experience and use it in a positive way on my putt to win. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, you know, learning is a big part of being successful and, you know, it's not a, not a topic that we've touched on today too much, but, um, but, you know, you really, failure breeds success and, and you took advantage of that when you made mistakes and learned from that experience and, and turned it into a win. So good for you on that one. How, um, you know, how did you incorporate course management into, into your strategy? Is that, do you consider that sort of part of sports psychology as well? Um, I, maybe not in the traditional sense, but again, I think it, it, it comes back to, to preparation. And, uh, if you have a, you have a strategy in your mind on, on what, what you want to hit on, on certain holes and how you want to attack a hole, I think that's, that's just a, a great mental, uh, strategy to have. You know, I, I think the more prepared you are, the more, mentally ready you will be for uh, any situation. So, so course management for me is, is sort of a, a mix between um, preparation and, and the mental part of it because it's certainly, you know, you're, you're not going to just bomb driver off every hole. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're thinking about how you want to play a hole, then obviously you're using your brain, and, uh, and that's psychological. So, yeah, and, and I guess that's the short answer. Yeah, yeah, and, and, you know, you mentioned being organized as well. Do you think that factors into this as well with, you know, planning out your round ahead of time and knowing what holes you, you know, may be aggressive or totally. maybe not? Oh, totally. they want to want, I, in fact, the year before I won in Vancouver, at the same course, I played with uh, Darren Griff, player of the Canadian Tour, who was playing great at the time. And he stepped up on every hole knowing exactly what he was going to hit and feeling comfortable with what he was going to hit. And I looked at that and I thought, man, my, my game strategy was not that good this week. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. So, you know, for, for uh, the rest of that year, certainly it was, okay, okay, make sure that you know and you are comfortable with exactly what you're hitting on every team because it shouldn't change, you know, and based on visualizing and knowing the wind direction the night before, it shouldn't change all that much. Certainly you're going to have certain holes that you can either go for it or stay back, uh, lay up. Uh, but uh, for him to, for me to watch him be that comfortable was, was something to learn for sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's great. Um, interesting. And, uh, you know, kind of last question here. What, uh, you kind of touched on this a little bit with challenges, and I know everybody out there has challenges and obstacles that they have to overcome. What, what do you consider to be some of the items that, that stood out in your mind and, and, uh, that you had to overcome to win? I think one of the things that I noticed, uh, or that I, that I had to overcome was watching other players that I knew I was better than win for me. <laughs> Okay. And, and the struggle of knowing that I was good enough and not winning yet. Um, those, those, those things were, were, were difficult for me, you know, to see other players play better than me and for me to, to not maybe get out of my own way enough to allow myself to, to play as good as I was capable and as good as I should have. Yeah. So that that was that was uh, a challenge for me. And as I, I guess as as my career went on, it was difficult to be away from home and, and knowing that other uh, friends and uh, buddies were were sort of progressing in a in a different way than I was. Uh, whether it was from a career standpoint or a, a 
family standpoint or a financial standpoint. Um, it was tough for me to continue to justify not having my own house, not, not being able to build a, a proper relationship with, uh, with anybody. It was, uh, that was, that was tough for me at the end of my career, for sure, and certainly weighed in on, on, uh, my decision to finally end up retiring from, from professional golf. Um, so those, those were struggles for me. Certainly, uh, I felt that if I got to the PGA Tour, it would have been different because the financial reward was there. Yeah. So, so to, to connect those two, um, you know, chasing your dream and, and, you know, being so close to achieving it and then sort of all the financial worries and, and that sort of stuff, uh, dissipating at, at the result of achieving that goal was, was very enticing to continue. But, um, you know, that, that part weighed on me quite a bit. But early, I guess earlier in my career, um, just, just learning how to win, overcoming the things like, um, getting out of my own way and, uh, just believing in yourself enough that it was going to happen. Those were, those were not, uh, as easy as just saying it. You know, it, it took a lot of work. Um, and it was a lot of fun working t- towards it, but, um, it's just, it's just a lot of work to do that. Yeah, wow. Well, that's, uh, you've, uh, thanks for your openness. I mean, that's, that's, uh, you're keeping it real, and that's what this is all about, is really getting into, um, you know, what it, what it, what you do think about when you're out there. And, and, uh, I want to thank you for, for, um, all of your, um, you know, contribution to this, uh, you know, opening up and, and finding out what it is that, that makes you successful or made you successful on the, on the tour. And, and, uh, you know, you obviously spent quite a lot of time on, on the psychology side and, and, uh, really appreciate your openness with, uh, with all your, all your feedback and, and answers to the questions here. So really. That's what we do in the bank, right? We keep it real. Hey, no, there you go. Well, uh, well, thanks again. I, I really appreciate it. If, uh, anything, any final comment that you want to, Kind of leave us with. Go Jets, go. Other than other than the hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, you know. I, I think golf psychology, sports psychology, whatever psychology. I think it's all. Uh, I want to believe it's all related. I think. Uh, I think it's life psychology. You know. I think it's all very connected. Uh, goal setting, positive thinking. Visualization, all all that sort of stuff. I'm I'm uh, a big believer in in that working. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm hoping and believing that it will transfer to my next career. I, I've just got to figure out exactly how how to get that done. But um, I'm a, I'm believing that uh, my experiences as a professional golfer uh, will will translate into uh, success as as uh, as a business person, so I think it's all connected, and, and I, I don't think it's specifically golf psychology or sports psychology, but just uh, life psychology in, in general. So, um, yeah, yeah. I guess from a scientific standpoint, that's uh, the last comment I I, I can make. But uh, yeah, I, I I enjoy talking about this stuff, and and uh, I I think it helps develop uh, people professionally and personally and, and I'm I'm all about uh, I'm all about talking about your feelings so I think it helps me and uh, anytime anybody will listen I'm more than happy to, to talk oh that's great and you know what a great way to end because I uh, you know I completely agree with you that this isn't just about golf psychology you know it's um, these fundamentals if we can call them that really apply to life and uh, they can be applied to sport golf or business or any kind of career that you choose so awesome um really appreciate it and um thanks again for joining me anytime man for sure all right well uh have a good night sounds good that's it you're well will do okay yeah, yeah. Bye.